So we have the first one here, of one of many of my um, film art books, but this one was given to me I think a couple Christmases ago, and obviously you can see from the picture that I'm showing you now, it's Art of Zootropolis, it's uh, one of the Disney art books. I have three Disney art books in total which I'll show you in a sec, but I'll just quickly flick through a few of the pages of uh, these ones. So what I love about these books is seeing some of the like concept art of the characters. So as you can see here, they've got a lot of like how the characters could have been in the films. And I just find that quite fascinating. And I like to see like the process in like the creative process, which um, films go, go through to the final end result. Oh, like I like all the little different cars and different designs, how they would fit all the animals in. <laughs> that giraffe is beautiful. Right, so I'll just quickly flick through this. I'll try and pull it a bit to the side so you can see the other pages. But yeah. And I like, I like all of the different art interpretations of the characters. Um, and you can see that they've written down here that they'd be done either like digitally, so these are digital artworks. I think most of the art for this was done digitally, obviously to be able to incorporate it and send it via to different directors to show them how it goes. But yeah, I do like this one a lot and I was given this again, like I said, for, as a gift. Uh, because people know me and I really love art books and they're really great gifts to give me. Um, I really love the like colours. You can take inspiration from certain sections of this book. Like you could totally just take, kind of pick all of the colours from this image to utilise and just kind of improve your own artwork. And again, I love seeing all of the different towns from this film, like how they made it for different animals. So you've got the kind of icy area, which is also a very good thing to pick up colours from. I say if I move too quickly you can, I'll try and leave it enough so that you can pause if you do want to see certain pages. But yeah, so that's that one. And then I have The Art of Coco. Uh, I got given this about two years ago from my mum for my, I think it was birthday? Could be birthday or Christmas, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, this one I absolutely love. I mean. I'm a huge fan of the film Coco, uh, it brought me to tears, me and my mum to tears, and I just love everything about it. Oh, look at that picture. I just love the art style of this, it just makes me really happy. I mean, look how beautiful this is and the colours against the black background. Again, you can really get like inspiration for your own artwork from these pieces. I just find all of this really, really fascinating to flick through and just sit down with a cup of tea and just flick through when you're kind of in that kind of art block stage, which you don't know what you're doing with your artwork. And it's just nice to see how other artists go through a different process seeing char character development is such a huge thing. Oh, look at the, I like the different hairs, the different wigs on these skeletons, and colours. Oh, we got the page on Frida. And I love the uh, Alahibres in this film. The colours used for them are stunning. I'm sorry if I butcher any of the names. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing things. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at all of the cute little designs for them. And some of the stuff that you get in these art books, you can't see in the film because obviously they, a lot of the stuff does get scrapped when people make art for films. And I just find it, when you find a film that you really love, getting an art book on it, you get to see all of the little hidden gems that could have been in the film. Oh, 
I'll flip through a bit quicker now, otherwise this video will be extremely long. Um, I love the like watercolour added to the background of these and it's it's nice to see in each of these like I said before um, it mentions what's what the materials used if it's um, non-digital so here it says it's pen and gouache was used to create these art pieces here <laughs> oh I like this one it looks completely different to how it so this this is what I love you can see what it could have been um, yeah, both of these are done in digital. And wow, you get to see all the different sculpting process. So these are all sculpted for, with clay. And exploring different art mediums for the characters. Oh, this page for colour is beautiful. got the land of the dead and look at this this is a digital piece but it, it looks so if you, if you look at it closely and it could have just been painted with acrylic digital art fascinates me so much and I'll go on to the next right and the next one I have I was gifted this from my sister and it's the art of frozen another Disney one this is the last of the Disney ones I'll be showing you um, unless you consider Marvel ones Disney then there will be two more <laughs> right I'm gonna flick from the back because I find that easier so this may annoy some of you from back to front but there you go let's see oh it's marshmallow I love him in the films. I like to see all the different artwork of Elsa and how like her hair, like a lot of the artwork I've seen that of her, she has quite short, like spiky chopped hair. So it's interesting to see how they went with the kind of long plait. Yeah, so here's the final designs of her. Oh, I mean the colours of this are beautiful. Like you could just put this on your desk and just study it a bit. Add some of the colours into your own work. Oh, Sven. My favourite character from Frozen. I like how it shows you all of the different designs they have for the trees as well. It's very useful for if you're wanting to add trees into your own work and you need any examples of how they create the kind of the snowfall on the trees. Oh, and of course we have Hans here. I know a lot of people either love him or you hate him. It's like Marmite. <laughs> well, this is really interesting. So this is basically a page of kind of inspiration of what they got for adding any of the embroidery designs onto the character's clothes in the film. I find this really interesting because you can adapt certain techniques that people use in how they create characters into your own character creations or world creations. Wow, so Anna looks pretty much how she would have been um in the final uh drawing of her but if you see Elsa's so much different in this yes that was the frozen art of frozen book 
highly recommend any of these Disney books. They do go into quite a lot of detail, showing you the process of how they got to the final film and how they kind of came up with certain uh, details for each character. So we are into the kind of Marvel studio art of books. Uh, what I really like about these is they all come with like a slip cover, so to protect from the actual book inside. So I've got Black Panther here, which ha is one of my favourite um, Marvel films. Sorry, my brain's going dead there. Um, I have two in total of these. There is a few more that I would like to get, but they're quite rare now. Uh, but yeah, I'll show you what the book looks like inside. Get that out of the way. So I've got this nice, pretty hardcover here. Oh, the cracking. And I like to look through these pages, similar in the other ones that I've shown you. And it's, I just get very fascinated on how they pick up certain features from things they've researched and include them into their character designing and drawings and how they style the costumes, how they create the costumes. I mean like, this is really cool. I love the kind of the masks they use on that. And what I do like about these Marvel books is it shows you quite a diverse amount of uh, outfits and customizations for each of the characters which they could have had and it shows you obviously the final thing. So like you can even see all the different props that they could have had and how they would look. And this is beautiful and stunning. I will flick through, these ones have quite an extensive amount of pages in so I will kind of flick through them quite quickly but you can pause if you see any pages you want to look at. You can see all the different like colour variants, sorry for the lighting you can't tell that much. So you kind of got like a blue tone, red tone, pink tone, all the different ones. I love seeing all of the kind of drawed up, um, what they called, like concepts for the worlds. I find it fascinating in how much effort it would have took to create these pieces. And some of them don't even get used and that is why it's so nice to buy these art books and really appreciate all the hard work that all of the designers had to go through to get to achieve this film. We've got some pictures and inspiration here. So that's the Black Panther Marvel book and I'll go on to my uh, second Marvel book. I still love the slipcase, it keeps it nice and neat and away from the dust and it has a lot of the artwork on the front which is really nice right and now we have another one of my favorite marvel films thor ragnarok uh, i love the art in this i love the the drawings the designs the pretty much everything about this film is i would say this could be my top favorite film but i i don't know my mind always goes in and out of different things but yes, this one I will say the slip cover when unveils this beautiful um, artwork with all the colours and stuff. I just love it. I 
Again, I will be flipping from back to front just because I find it easier, but I'll show you. Again, we've got more of that beautiful art, the colours, you could use that for inspiration. Um, like I've said previously for the other books. And we've got some really big photos from some of the artists that created designs for the film. And the Valkyries there, and oh, this is stunning. Like world, the creation of, I think it's Asgard, yeah. Oh, I love the colours on this page. <laughs> you can see the bed for the Hulk. I like how they've done like the 3D model of it. Designs that could have been the armor that the Hulk wears. My favorite, I like to see the process of the costumes, but then that might be the kind of costume designer within me um, and artist as well. I love seeing all the different props. That's what I like about these Marvel books, is they're very, they go quite hard into showing you all of the different designs that could have been for all the props and costumes. We have the Grand Master here, all the different looks. I'll flick through quite quickly now. I love these pages on Hela and I like all of the different designs for her helmet slash kind of crown. And it will tell you throughout, obviously I, I'm not going to read them all out now, but if you eventually get this book or want to have a look at it, if someone's got it, um, it will tell you in all of the little snippets written down here about kind of what they were thinking when they were coming up with the designs. find these ones stunning. Oh look, and you've got Ventress here, her wolf. You probably can't see these, these are very dark pages. I will try and see if I can edit it a bit better so you can see. And look at the difference. Loki here. I'm definitely a big fan of Loki and obviously the actor Tom Hiddleston that plays Loki. Um, I love this, very Victorian gentleman. for Thor. Obviously before he had his hair cut. I miss those. I look in here they've put a little bit of the comics and where obviously the inspiration they used from the comics for the film. So you've got Hela there and obviously you can see they've tried to interpret her crown quite accurately. And again for Hulk as well in the comics. I like these sketches. So that was the 
Thor Ragnarok art book. I'll put it back in its slipcase. So I have three more books that I'm going to show you that are all um, Studio Ghibli books. Um, some of them are my favourites. I haven't got all of the books that I want to for this, uh, but I do have two, uh, three of my favourite films and obviously I had to get the art for it. So I've got The Art of Howl's Moving Castle. I love, I actually love looking at these books because uh, they use a lot of watercolours for that artwork, as you can see. I love the flow of the pencil work, something that I would like to incorporate in my own drawings and sketchbook. Which the thing about these books is that it shows you the storyboards which are used to create the actual film. Um, so I find that pretty cool. I'll flick quite quickly through this. I love Howl's Castle. I just love how it looks on the outside and how put together it is in the inside. <laughs> or not so put together till Sophie gets there. drawings of Howl here. I love this page. It's one of my favourite scenes in Howl's Moving Castle. Um, when he dyes his hair, he goes in to dye his hair and Sophie's moved all his dyes around and he basically just becomes slime out of how, <laughs> how sad he's become of his hair changing to an, this orange shade. So much it ch changes into a black shade. I've always loved this image in particular. Let's see if we can get it better centered here for you. Howl's room is an aesthetic but also something that I could never, well similar to my room I do have a lot of crap in my room full of like more like anime figures and posters and books. Uh, but I just love this aesthetic. If I could keep up and actually know where to find things in this I totally have a room that looks like this. It must have taken forever to like draw each individual item as well for this. I'll just quickly flick through the rest. And then what you find in these is they actually include the final screenplay and basically all of their lines in each of these um, Studio Ghibli Art Of books, which I find very useful, especially if you ever wanted to kind of like reenact or just want to know what they're saying if you can't hear what they've said in a certain thing. I just find it quite cool and handy. Right, I'll go into the next one. So we got Princess Mononoke. Again, this one's very pretty. I love the um, forest designs in this one. Uh, 
and the kind of magical spirits that you get. So you got Ashitaka and Yakul. Yakul has got to be one of my favourite um, animal characters in Studio Ghibli. Um, I wish I had some merch of him. I love the forest um, watercolours, they're beautiful, the colours, kind of the greens and the browns and very earthy tones. I'm not showing all the pages here for you, just because it would make the video quite long. I love these scenes and the colours and the contrast between the forest spirit with this kind of dark, like tealy forest. And then similar to the other one, it has kind of the cells and how they, basically what they use to create the final cells for the film. And then again, they've got just a production diary in this one, which is actually very interesting, especially if you're into that kind of research of if you're wanting to create your own production. So that one's the Princess Mononoke one. And then we have the Art of Nausicaa. This has got some of my favourite pages in an art book. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you, shouldn't I? So we've got the concept sketches for the characters. Tapestry. Different tapestries. This section of the book I absolutely love. So it's the Sea of Decay um, and if you've watched a film you'll be familiar with this. Uh, but I just love the kind of, as it says, it's the Sea of Decay but it has so much life within it. Um, and it's kind of this like, toxic jungle where you can't really breathe the air and stuff but you still have these kind of mutated creatures within it. Um, I should find it, I don't know, I should find all of this kind of dystopian artwork. It just appeals to me quite a bit. I love how magical it is, even though it's meant to be something that kind of represents such a kind of sad time of how, what life would have been if this kind of catastrophe that happens um, occurred. And again, I kind of love this very dark, teal toned colours that they use within this with the kind of greens. photos from the manga. Some little petrified giant warriors here. And some more manga photos. I do recommend reading the manga if you haven't, if you um, enjoyed the films because the art of well, the art that's used in the manga is stunning. I find these really cute. I know some people find them creepy, but they I find them adorable. Look at them. And they're not even trying to do too much harm. I 
have a toy that my um, sister got me from Manchester of this and it's the cutest thing ever and it's just too adorable and this actual particular creature does feature in Laputa as well which is one of the art books that I do want to get next and if I do eventually get it I will show it in one of my studio vlogs because I'm I believe it will probably just be as just as stunning as this art book Bit more of the sea of decay here. I love this page as well. I don't know, there's something about it. There's, I think it's the colours. So that's the art of Nausicaa. 